see your feet this morning. We got our kids, we're going to have to come into our rhythm section today. So if there are any kids out there who are not up here, they can come and join us. Pick up an instrument. We're getting sorted out. You guys are going to have to, you're going to have to pick one. There we go. You guys see any kids around here that are not up here with instruments? We are going to lift the name of Jesus today. I know.
Thank you, Andy. Be seated. Thanks for seeing with us this evening. Good morning and welcome to our service. This is the day that the Lord has made. I, we, you will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Okay, starting tonight, today, 1.30, we are setting up to go to Rome for Bible school. So if you can help us, we would love to have you here. Hopefully, if we get enough, you'll only be here an hour to hour and a half. Right, Tom? <laughs> Just kidding. It's Bible school, so it's going to take a little longer than that. But if you can help us, we would love to have you join us at 1.30. And in talking about Bible school, it starts tomorrow, 6 o'clock, here at the church. Joining us is going to be Billings Community Church. They still need some helpers. And the list is on the window of the church office. And we have just a few sign-ups left for food. If you did sign up for food, if you could bring it the day before, that would help the ladies that are doing the preparation or have it here that day up by 4 o'clock. Um, next Saturday after Bible school... At 9.30 in the morning, we need everybody to help us tear down and get the church prepared for Sunday worship uh, next Sunday. And I would ask that each of you, as you think about the kids, the workers, just overall Bible school, that you would pray this week. Especially if we could have some people that would take it upon themselves to pray between 6 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. for Bible school, that would be awesome. We really are praying that God will move among our kids that week and even the workers um, that everyone um, would receive some help during Bible school. Today, Garage Keeper, 6 o'clock, an all men's fellowship. Kind of just a get together since you haven't been together much during the summer. Boy, the summer months just really screw everything up, don't they? But it's fun. I, I know a lot of you have spent time with family this summer, and that's awesome. Um, but tonight at Tim Davis's house, you're going to have a big fellowship for all the men from starting at 6 o'clock and following the morning service. If you are between the ages of 18 and 35, raise your hand. Between 18 and 35. <laughs> uh, and I'm 17. Um, <laughs> we're going to talk golf. If you would like to go, just meet me down here um, in the front after the service. In the bulletin, you will see Feed His Lambs fundraiser during Timolo Days. Um, if you could take that and get some pies to them, I think it's pie fundraiser. Um, if you have any questions, you can see Carrie after the service at Men's Prayer Breakfast. August 12th at 8 a.m. and the ladies' luncheon is August 12th at 11 a.m. and there is a sign-up sheet in the back for the ladies' luncheon. And where is Barb? Where's your wife? Well, when you see Barb, we would like to congratulate her. She was ordained. Thursday night. Oh, so when you see her, if you will tell her congratulations on that. It was a wonderful, wonderful service. It was a good week at District Assembly this week. Lots of new things are going to happen in our district and in our churches. So there she is, Mark. Thank you. <laughs> We want to say thank you and congratulations as a church on your ordination on Thursday. It's a very high position in the church, one that the church does not take lightly and neither do we once we have made it to ordination. It is something that is just 
It doesn't leave you. And when I was watching Barb get ordained and the other 12, there was 13 that got ordained. Uh, just brought back memories of the day that I was ordained. And a lot of us, the tears were just flowing on the platform. And she was too. <laughs> so, congratulations, Barb. If the others go to work, we'll take up our morning guys and Oh, wait a minute. Uh -oh. <laughs> I was afraid you're I was afraid it might happen. <laughs> you know, for several weeks we've been putting in the uh, weekly email and a little announcement about scholarships for Mid America. It so happens that the way scholarships work, at least for the time being, they used to do things a little differently and then they kind of changed things. There are scholarships available for students from our district to go to Mid America and though that scholarship fund has been, uh, needs to be replenished. And so the general superintendent at district assembly challenged our churches to uh, give $2,500, each church to give $2,500 to that scholarship fund to bring that up to where it needs to be. Well, I had to fill out a card. I didn't have to, but I felt led to. And I said, I'm sure our folks in our church will back me up on this, that we believe in education and we believe in educating our students and we want them to have a good education and it would be really good if they would go to mid-america we would appreciate that so i filled out my little card and i i pledged our church for twenty five hundred dollars and they said when can you have this paid and i said next week <laughs> <laughs> not really <laughs> but We've been talking about it. I had a fair, fair warning before district assembly that that would happen, and I talked about it in the weekly email. If, you were, if any of you read that, you'll catch that in there. So uh, if you have that, you want to give to that fund, we have several weeks. It doesn't have to be done today. But if you have an offering, I think $350 already has come in for that. But if you would like to mark your check that way and put it in the offering plate, and that will help us. So we have several weeks to do that. So be praying about asking the Lord to lead you what you might want to give for that scholarship fund. We would like, we have several students coming up that are looking to go to Mid-America, and we would like to help them out in that scholarship fund. So that's a word to the wise is sufficient thing. <laughs> Okay, if the usher will come forward. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we give you praise this morning for your presence here, your presence that was here before we even arrived. Thank you for your goodness to us this week. And bless this offering, <coughs> gift and the giver, as we give back to you what you have given to us in your name. Amen. Amen.
burden, a special burden, or maybe you're rejoicing in your answer to prayer. Whatever the case may be, our altar girls. Trust you to 
know that you know how to handle it. So may this day of worship be exactly that. That you can take the whole world. You can have every part of it. Just give me Jesus. Because with Jesus, we can't go wrong. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. May the rest of our worship today as we study your word together and hear a word from you that it would speak right to where we live and what you want us to know about and what you do for us. We will give you praise and thanks. In a strong name. Continue their worship downstairs. I'm sorry. Can I say something? Yes, Tom. Um, if everyone would just keep Jim and Xander in your prayers tomorrow, they're both having their tonsils and adenoids taken out tomorrow morning. Uh, so just keep the boys in your prayers and the doctors do their job and boys are safe and they heal quickly because school starts soon and hmm, they get to spend the rest of their summer in bed. <laughs> Good. That's happening in the morning? Yeah. Six Chandler and Xander. Remember that. Good. Thank you. Yes. As Pastor Candy mentioned that uh, Vacation Bible School starts tomorrow evening. And so uh, please, if you can help or whatever is needed, uh, whatever you can do, I, anything would be appreciated, I know. But most of all, your prayers, that your prayer support is, is what's most needed. And we would, we would cover those, those prayers this week that God would do some amazing things in the lives of our kids and in those of us who are helping today. Exactly. Good. Well, I invite your attention this morning, if you would, to uh, open your Bibles and uh, whatever you have the Bible app on. <laughs> That you would. I know Ron uh, Ron Marshall told me uh, several times before he, he said, "One of these days I'm gonna get you to have a, you're gonna preach out for your iPad." I'm like, yeah, fat chance. <laughs> <laughs> I know I frustrate him <laughs> and others. <laughs> But we're in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 13 again. We're down at the end of the chapter, chapter uh, 13, verse 44, beginning verse 44 to verse 52, that section. And if you would just hold your Bible open there, we will get to that in just a moment. So leave them open. Before we do, let's recite our motto together. If you could together, are you ready? All together. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I give you permission to speak to me to speak through me, to do whatever you want with my life. I trust the leadership of your Holy Spirit. Do we really? Amen. Amen. I trust that we are continuing to learn to do that. Trusting the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, it was one of those terrible summertime scenarios you read about from time to time. It was early September in San Antonio, Texas, and the thermometer stood at 99 degrees in September in Texas. And it so happened that a woman accidentally locked her 10-month-old niece inside a parked car. Quite frantically, she and her sister, the baby's mother, ran around the car in, in near hysteria, wondering how they could... A bystander tried to help. He attempted to unlock the car with a clothes hanger. You know how some of us think we, are, we can do anything with clothes hangers. 
And soon the infant was turning purple and had foam on her mouth. It was becoming a life or death situation. And at this point, a man by the name of Fred Ariola, he was a record driver. He arrived on the scene and he grabbed a hammer and he smashed the back window of the car to save the child from certain death. He was successful. Now, I ask you, was Fred heralded as a hero? Well, by most people, but not by the aunt who accidentally locked the doors. Fred reports that the lady was mad at me because I broke the window. <laughs> and he said, I just thought, what's more important, the baby or the window? What's more important, the baby or the window? Well, this morning, our theme for today is this. It's time for each of us to decide what really, what is really important in our lives. It's time that we decide what is really important in our lives. Now let's take a look at what our scripture says today in Matthew chapter 13 beginning at verse 44. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy, he went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw the bat away. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? Jesus asked. Yes, they replied. And he said to them, Therefore, every teacher of the law who has become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. May God add his blessing to this word. Now, what, what Jesus is saying to us is that a fulfilling life only comes to those who have determined what really matters in this world and then they give everything they have to pursuing that one thing. A fulfilling life is, only comes to those who are determined what really matters in this world and then give everything they have to pursuing that one thing. That makes sense, doesn't it? Does it make sense to you? If there's one thing in life that matters more than anything else, it would certainly make sense to lock in on that one thing and make it the single most important priority in your life. That's the way to have a successful life. Of course, some people have difficulty deciding what is most important. Don't we? And we are. It kind of reminds me of the man who went to the sheriff's department to report that his wife was missing. My wife is missing, he reported to the desk sergeant. She went shopping yesterday and she hasn't come home. Sounds like my wife. <laughs> so the sergeant asked, well, what's her height? How tall is she? The man said, Gee, I'm not sure. A little over five feet tall, I suppose. The sergeant asked, well, what about her weight? The man looked hopeless. I don't know, he said. Not slim, not really fat. I don't know. The sergeant, well, what, what's the color of her eyes? The man said, I've never noticed. <laughs> well, what's the color of her hair? The sergeant asked. Well, he said it changes a couple times a year. The man said it might be dark brown, might be 
be blonde. Well, what was she wearing? Sergeant asked. Well, he said, could have been a skirt. Could have been shorts. I don't really remember exactly. Sergeant getting pretty exasperated. He said, well, what kind of a car did she go in? The man said, oh, she went in my truck. Well, what kind of a truck is it? Well, the man just started glowing this time. And he said, well, it's a brand new 2017 <laughs> Ford F-150 King Ranch 4x4. It has custom leather seats and bubble floor mats. It has heavy-duty towing package with a gold hitch, a DVD player with navigation, a 21-channel CB radio, six cup holders, and, and four power outlets, and, and USB ports to plug into he paused for a moment. And he said, my wife put a small scratch on the driver's door. <laughs> and at that point, the, the man started choking up, getting all emotional. Don't worry, Sergeant said sympathetically. We'll find your truck. <laughs> you see... Everybody has their own set of priorities. Their own set of what's really important in life. We all do. Storyteller Bill Harley tells about a child's t-ball game that he witnessed several years ago. He said on one of the t-ball teams was a little girl with special needs named Tracy. Tracy limped and she couldn't hit the ball at all but everyone cheered for her anyway. Well it was her team's last game and Tracy came up to bat. She swung at the ball and quite miraculously she hit the ball. And her coach yelled for her to run to first base. And then he yelled for her to keep going towards second base. And then to keep running to third base. By this time, the fans in the stands were all on their feet cheering Tracy to go to home plate. But as she neared home plate, something wondrous happened. An old dog kind of loped out onto the field <laughs> and parked itself just off the line between third base and home plate. Moments away from her very first home run, Tracy stopped, stopped dead in her tracks, knelt in the dirt beside the dog and gave it a big hug. <laughs> uh, she never made it on plate. The crowd cheered for her anyway because she had showed them what was really important to her. And it wasn't winning a T-ball game. <laughs> what is it? What is it that is really important to you? What is it that you care the most about? Most of us would say our families are really important to us. Those of us who have families, we would say family is most important. And that's good. That's really good. We are... We are created for relationships, and the family is the most basic of all relationships. It's not to say that family life is easy. We're finding that out, some of us. <coughs> Especially families with children have many challenges along the way. This kind of reminds me, and pardon, pardon another corny joke, but it reminds me of the, of the census taker who stopped at a suburban home years ago said, how many children do you have? He asked the lady in the home. The woman answered four. Census taker said, well, can I have their names, please? The woman said, wearily, well, we named them Eeny, Meeny, Miney, and Frank. <laughs> Eeny, Meeny, Miney, and Frank? The census taker somewhat amused by this and said, okay, that's fine, but can I ask you why you named your fourth child Frank? The woman answered, because we didn't want no more. <laughs> <laughs> I warned you 
true as corny. But, <laughs> but even in the best of situations, living together as families is difficult. <laughs> Nevertheless, our family should be one of our highest priorities. And this is where we learn. We learn that we are loved. This is where we develop our values. The things that we deem are important <coughs> to us. Our children need our time and, and our guidance. And of course the most important guidance we can give our children is our own example of how we live our lives. Because they will see far more than they will hear. An author for Reader's Digest writes how he studied the Amish people in preparation for an article he wrote on them. And in his observation at an Amish schoolyard, he, he noted that the children never screamed or yelled. It just really amazed him. So he spoke to the schoolmaster and he, he remarked how he had not once heard an Amish child yell. And he asked the schoolmaster why he thought that well, so the schoolmaster just replied to, to the author and said, Well, have you ever heard an, an Amish adult yell? Good question. Because a child's behavior is sometimes the best gauge of what that child observes at home. And most of us, if we were asked what is really important to us, would probably have our families on that list. Most of us would also have on that list our health. We have our health on that list. It's interesting, don't you think? <laughs> most of us agree that our health is very, very important to us. I mean, after all, you could have a billion dollars in the bank. But if you don't have good health, as well as someone to enjoy it with, you, uh, what good would it be to have a billion dollars in your hand? Not much, would it? Not much. Now some people are really conscious of their health. You see them out running or, or jogging or simply walking briskly for hours each week. Or you might see them at the gym on the exercise machines, you might see them at the, at the checkout at the supermarket. You see that their cart is filled with, with the only healthy choices in foods. They visit their doctor on a regular basis and they, they enjoy none of the vices that shorten the lives of less careful folk. And they're to be celebrated. And I believe, I really do, I believe God wants us to take as good a care for our bodies as we can. We should. They are one of His most wonderful gifts to us. Our bodies. However, life sometimes plays cruel tricks on us. Doesn't it? Some of us, some of you I should say, well I guess I could be in there, are uh, old enough to remember the name Ewell Gibbons. Remember that name? Ewell <coughs> Gibbons became quite a, quite a celebrity during the 1960s and 70s for advocating natural diets featuring wild berries and nuts. Anybody remember that? A few of you. Okay. I, I just remember along about 70, 74 to 76. And some of you might remember him as the spokesperson for grape nuts. Sure. And he even made it into a popular folk song of the time, back in, I think it was about 1976, a popular folk song at the time called Junk Food Junkie. Did any of you remember that little tune, anybody? Yeah. Well, it, it was about a hippie type guy whose image among his friends was as a health food enthusiast. However, secretly, he was addicted to junk food. And so he begins this song, Junk Food Junkie, by singing about all the healthy foods that he consumed. In fact, this might 
trigger your memory. Listen to this. Sugar don't touch my lips And my friends is always begging me to take them off back with my on the trips Yes they are But at night I take out the strong bottle that I keep under my teeth And I take it all through my closet where nobody else can see I open that lid so slowly to take a peek up north down south Then I pull out my hostess Twinkie <laughs> I don't know if you caught all that <clears throat> or not what he was talking about. But after, after each verse, he would go into a refrain that went something like this. Oh, but at night I stake out my strong box that I keep under lock and key and I take it off to my closet where nobody else can see. I open that door so slowly I take a peek up north and south. Then I pull out a hostess Twinkie and I pop it in my mouth. <laughs> now don't be nudging your wife or your husband. Don't be nudging them now. That's, that's not nice. <laughs> Some of you suddenly developed a craving for Twinkies, didn't you? <laughs> anyway, if there's a verse in the song that begins like this. My friends down at the commune, they think I'm pretty neat. Oh, I don't know nothing about arts and crafts, but I give them all something to eat. I'm a friend of old Yule Gibbons, and I only eat homegrown spice, etc. And then he goes into the refrain again about taking the strong box out from underneath the bed, off to the closet where nobody else can see, and takes a look, so nobody's watching, and pulls out the hook, just spoons and pops it in the mouth. For a while, Yule Gibbons was a pop icon, known for his dietary habits. However, Cynics like to point out that Ewell Gibbons, the outspoken advocate for healthy diets, didn't even live long enough to draw Social Security. And that's true. He died at the age of 63, but it had nothing to do with his diet. He died from a ruptured aortic aneurysm related to a genetic condition that he had. But it just kind of struck everybody as odd. Life is filled with such ironies, isn't it? Hmm. Runners, runners the world over were shocked when a man by the name of Jim Fix, the author of the 1977 best-selling book, The Complete Book of Running, when he died of a heart attack while jogging at just 52 years old. His father had died even younger of the same cause, but that takes nothing away from the sport of running. Because sometimes genes are more powerful than any lifestyle choice we make. Life is just tricky. Life is just that. It happens sometimes. Family and health are vitally important to us. But our, our families can turn their backs on us. And health will someday fail us. No matter how disciplined we might be. But notice this. The mortality rate for human beings is still 100%. Yeah. <laughs> no one's going to live forever. And there is only one priority that can be at the top of the list of things that are really, really important to us, and that is our faith in God. Amen. Our faith. Look at Matthew chapter 13, verse 44 and verse 46 that we read here. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, said Jesus. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy, went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. So in other words, 
We are to give our first priority to seeking the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. The term, those terms are interchangeable in the Bible. The kingdom of God. Our first priority is to seek God's kingdom. Now the kingdom of God is God's rule in human life. Everything else in this world is perishable. You understand? Are you hearing that? God's rule, God, the kingdom of God is God's rule in human life. Everything else in the world is perishable. Everything else in the world has an expiration date. Or, or used by or sell by date. You know my wife's gone. And I found out the other day when I took the carton of milk out from my morning glass and I drank it and I was like, whoa, that just tastes terrible. <laughs> I'm like, what in the world would be wrong with that? And I, it dawned on me, I looked at the, I went, oh, okay. And that's the reason why. It said it should be done by 7, 6 or something like that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that's why it tastes bad. <laughs> I guess. So I poured it down the drain and went and bought some new ones. And this time I looked at the date. It said good till August the 8th or something. So I'm, I'm in good shape. <laughs> but things are like that, aren't they? They have an expiration date, a sell-by date. Only one thing is eternal, and that is God's kingdom. Amen. God's kingdom. And you know what? When you seek after His kingdom above all things, the other things that are important to us just kind of have a tendency to fall into place. You notice that in your life? But the key is seek. If you will seek after His kingdom first, seek after His kingdom first, then all the other things that we think are important just kind of have a, have a way of falling into place in our life. And that's how we can tell whether they're really important or not. So, do you want a great family? Seek first God's kingdom. Amen. Then you'll be conscious of, of setting a good example. And the more committed you are to God, the more committed you'll likely be to your family. The more committed you are to God, the more committed you will likely be to your family. Martin. Copenhaver tells about a rabbi in Newton, Massachusetts who made quite a stir in, in his community by challenging the members of his congregation to hold the line on not playing sports on the Sabbath. Now this wasn't some fundamentalist preacher in the deep south. This was a modern Jewish rabbi in New England telling his congregation not to let their children play sports on Saturdays, which is the Jewish Sabbath. And to a gathering of parents in his congregation, he simply asked them this question. How many of you, he said, want and expect your children to grow up to become professional soccer players? No one raised their hand. Then he asked a second question. He said, so... How many of you want and expect your children to become good Jews? I don't know how many hands went up, but there were some parents who were deeply aroused by his question. <laughs> and the truth is, I, I don't know that that many Christian pastors are brave enough to ask that question in our sports crazy society we live in. But it is a good question. Yes. What is our priority? What is our priority? The same thing is true with our health. Seek first his kingdom. It's 
Studies show that religious people are healthier than non-religious people and have longer lifespans. I know it's not always the case, but generally speaking. And one reason is because most of us do live more disciplined lives than our non-religious neighbors. Seems like, at least, seems like Christians are less prone to indulge in such destructive behaviors as drugs, alcohol. However, we still have a, have a ways to go on our eating habits. Ouch. True. But you see, it's all a package. It's all a package. Seek God's kingdom first. Seek God's kingdom first and you'll be a better spouse. You'll be a better parent. You'll be a better member of the community. Your health will be better. Your attitude about the future will be better. You'll, be, you'll love your neighbor and you'll, you'll wish for a better world for everybody around you. Seek God's kingdom first. <laughs> That's why... I, 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 I end up in these conversations from today, quite frequently, it seems like. You know, want to argue their point because once they find out that you're, especially a, a preacher, a minister, you know, people want to argue their point that they're all right where they are, whatever their lifestyle is, and whatever they choose to do, and they want to argue. And I just, one simple thing, one simple thing to me, if you are seeking to please God, with everything you have within you, then I can trust God to lead you in what you ought to do and ought not to do. Amen. You don't need me to tell you what is right or wrong. God's going to be faithful. To, but you have to completely seek Him first. And if God's really first in your life, then it'll show evidence in your life. Do you believe that? So what is it that really, really matters to you? What is it? What is your treasure in a field? Or your, your pearl of great price? Because it's just as Jesus said in another place earlier on in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6 and verse 33, when He said, Seek first His kingdom and His righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. The things, other things that are important to you. So here's my question for you as we close. Will it be the baby or the window? Will it be the baby or the window in your life? And only you can answer Only you. Let's pray. Father God, how we need to be here this morning, Father. Because in recent days we have walked the ways of the world. We've experienced the joys and pains of life. We've struggled with achievements and temptations both known we've known both successes and failures and we've tried to manage all things with our limited wisdom power and knowledge we, we have stubbornly held to ideas that only hinder rather than help us we have neglected higher callings that we might avoid the struggle of mental and spiritual growth In a word, Lord, we have done with our days just about what we determine best. Forgive us, Lord, we pray. <coughs> Forgive us. And may we, may we turn our lives around by first seeking God's kingdom, God's righteousness, first, and then all the other things will be added. So we
we thank you for your steadfast love, Lord, for, for being the everlasting God that you are. We, we thank you for being able to together to worship you, O oh God. We thank you for initiating worship with us. And we realize that everything we have today comes from you. So thank you for sending your spirit upon us and in us that we may be empowered to do your will and your work. So go with us, Father, in the days of this week. And may our lives be a reflection of you in your glory. And may we shine as beams of hope and love to a lost and dying world. And may, may our sacrifices of praise today be acceptable in your sight. We honor you, O oh God, giving you all of our attention praise and adoration. We, we give you our whole selves. The thing that really matters most. And may your spirit continue to comfort us in our times of need and guide us throughout our lives. I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ who paid the debt of sin on our behalf. And who intercedes for us even now. We pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> we stand and plead to see the benediction this morning. Brothers and sisters, as we go out into the week, may we so live that our words and our actions speak of the joy that resides within us. And may the splendor of our calling be matched by the fervor of our living. And may God be praised because of the way we live. And may the peace of Christ be with you all. Thank you. God bless you. You are this one.